Gary, if you wouldn't mind telling us the story about what happened. I don't think I really told it right with the unemployment benefits and how you used uh, Facebook for that. So for me, what happened with that uh, issue was I had begun to get a reputation for being available as a, uh, an elected official through Facebook. And so someone, I don't remember who it, at this point, but someone uh, who had an issue with the unemployment system figured that they could go on Facebook, friend me, and tell me that they had the issue. Uh, and when they did, you know, I thought it was interesting that no one had worked on this issue. And so I um, called uh, the liaison to the state legislature and asked them if they could look into the issue. Uh, they looked into the issue and didn't really resolve it. And so I went back and talked to uh, the commissioner of labor who blew me off also. And so I know that if they blow me off, they must be blowing off everybody else because, you know, I do have a title. And so, um, <laughs> it's true. And so I uh, said, okay, this isn't good. And so I contacted the governor's office and asked the governor to look into it. The governor, of course, contacted the commissioner who uh, the governor, I guess, agreed with and said, well, the Department of Labor's response is adequate. Well, I wouldn't have been asking the governor to do something if the response was adequate. And so, um, you know, I get angry when people in my position and hired don't pay attention to the people who put them in office. And so I'm trying to figure out what to do. And I'm sitting there and I'm on my Facebook talking about it. And I realize, you know, Facebook, you can start groups. And so I started a group that uh, said that the title of the group was uh, No Governor Rell, the Department of Labor's Response is Not Adequate. That was the official title? That was the official title. Was there an acronym? No, there was no, you, you have to say the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, so, so people know I'm on there, and it's kind of like this funny thing. This guy, he can't keep doing this. He's going to get in trouble because people hear what he says. So people in the media actually pay attention to my Facebook. And so they find out I'm doing this. They write stories, and they're kind of like laughing at me. What are you going to do with Facebook? And what happened was there are a lot of people, you have 150 some odd thousand people who are unemployed, and they're pissed. And so what happens is the ones that are on Facebook are like, oh, I'm joining this group to figure out if he's going to do something. And so once I start getting people on this group, I say, well, what the hell am I going to do with them? <laughs> so, so, uh, I, so I find, uh, I, I start thinking in uh, the organizer mode that I used to operate in, because I come from a background of doing activism and organizing. And I say, I have to organize these people. And so I figured, the issue here is that uh, the telephone system doesn't work and the computer system doesn't work, partially because it's been bogged down and nobody thought ahead to say, let's increase their ability to work. And so I said, well, why don't we do the same thing to the governor's office? Since we have over about 1,200 people, why don't I say on Tuesday morning between 9 and 12, 1,200 people call the governor's office and shut down her phones. And then all of you who have email, email at the same time, because you'll effectively shut down her email system. And the governor, who said, no matter what you do, we'll fix this in about six months, decided that uh, they were going to pay people to be on, and they were going to get new computer systems and expand the system, and we had it fixed within a week. So then people got unemployment benefits. Yes. So another thing uh, Gary is known for is he has done more Twitter messages in office than any other politician in Connecticut. They actually count this. Linda McMahon was the only one who even came close, and he knows she doesn't write her own Twitter. What Gary does partly is when the legislature is having a hearing, you can go to his page and you follow the hearing from what Gary posts. So he says, now the commissioner is saying X. Now this legislator is saying why. I think this is good or bad. We'll also do this on Facebook. Gary, one thing I'm wondering in looking at that, is that effectively bringing a politician closer to people? Do you hear back from people as a result? Has been a time when because you were doing that, you've had evidence that a voter learned more about politics or cared more or did something about it? Yeah. Um, you know, Yes, is the direct answer to your question. But, you know, the way that I think about this is there's a book that was written a couple of years ago by uh, Theta Scotchpole, Diminished Democracy, and it's along the lines of Bowling Alone and all of these books about how social networks, not the ones we're talking about, but the old school, like, uh, you know, you have a Rotary Club or you have, you know, some group that gets together, or even here in your synagogue, people get together. All of that stuff is kind of declining. 
And so one of the things that, I, that I've been thinking about for years, because I'm a student of political science and social and you know how people act in society is how to bring people together and what I've seen happen here is when people know that uh, government can be responsive they actually participate and so my Facebook page and my Twitter page become kind of a hub for this and so I get feedback instantaneously when I'm putting out this information about what we're doing and there are people who are expert and there are people who are opinionated and I get all kinds of things which uh, actually are helpful to me as much as they're helpful to uh, the individuals who are paying attention. And so I've learned things and voted differently because of it. And I think when people see that you can change uh, what's going on in government, because everybody thinks you can't do anything about what we do. But when they see that there is the, the possibility of changing the way that at least one or two of us operate, you know, this becomes a place where, I mean, if you ever go on my Facebook and I make a comment, you notice that there are long strands of conversation to which I actually respond. Because some of us will get the long strands and not respond, and then people stop paying attention because they want to feel like they're in conversation with you. So, yes. That leads me to my next question for Gary. So another development with the new media, another filter that's gone is the role of the so-called pundit. When we used to have political debates in the Stone Age before 2009, <laughs> it really is, before 2009, it's changed since then. After a debate, you lost it on TV or you went, and then some reporters would be on TV or in the next day's paper, and they would be the pundits. I think this person did well. Here's the most important issue they talked about. Here's who won or who didn't win. <laughs> I have, even though I'm a reporter, I thought this was the most obnoxious part of my profession. First of all, they were always timid in what they said because they were ready to lose their job they said what they thought. And B, they just thought conventionally. Now, I was moderating a mayoral debate in 2009. When I got home, I noticed Gary had been in the crowd, <laughs> as had an alderman, Muddy Sandman, who was another expert at this stuff, with a real following. While the debate had been going on, they had been pundits. They were saying, now this candidate's talking about this, here's why they're doing a good job or not. And people at home were finding about the debate as it happened, and they were responding to what they said. And they did a better job of it. And then um, what really got me mad is one of the, in the Democratic primary for governor, there was a TV debate with Ned Lamont and Dan Malloy, and all us reporters were there. They said, you can't post your stories until we air this debate in a few hours, and until it's over. It was the middle of the day, and no one was going to be watching on their TV. And I thought the TV station didn't really understand how this works. But what was good is I noticed that Gary was watching the debate at 3 in the afternoon. I'm going to ask, you know, you're supposed to be at 3 in the afternoon. But on his Facebook page, he was doing a really good job of talking about what the candidates were talking about, what they weren't talking about. He was the pundit, and then the readers on Facebook were becoming the pundit. And I guess one question I have is, as citizens become political actors because of these networks, and as reporters, I believe the, the role of reporter is changing. Our opinions don't matter anymore. We're not really pundits, and that's a good thing. Our role is to get information out. Do you think the politicians' role is changing? Do you think that there are going to be more Garys out there and Muddies, and that part of your role is going to be being a pundit or even convening citizen punditry to analyze campaigns as they develop? I would hope that our role changes. You know, for too long, I think that we've been too disconnected from the people who put us in office, or even just the people in general. Um, in terms of doing a pundit thing, I actually think that a lot of people in politics will be very wary of that. I mean, we're wary of the Twitter and Facebook thing because we don't really want to say what's on our mind because we're concerned about elections. So I think that still has a lot to do with uh, the way we're going to operate in universe, which is why you see things like the Lynn McMahon, Chris Guy, that where they filtering through someone else. Uh, but I do, I do believe that as younger people come along who've used uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google Buzz, you name it, and understand the norms of the community, because there are norms on, the, on, on these networks, understand the norms, you then will begin to see people operate a little bit different, and that will then include people who are in politics.